now. And what I'd like to do is speak a bit to how to do an energetic protocol so that it can be as powerful as possible. The very first step before you even begin a protocol, I guess it's the first step of a protocol, is to call in the Ascended Masters. Invite them to encircle you. Create a safe space. That is step one. Then the second step is to use your inhale, your higher self and your energy fields, to pull yourself into your divine line, river of light that flows on the front of your spine. You can use your imagination as well, but it's, I invite my higher self, my body, Davis, higher self, and team to work with the energetic fields and the guides to pull our awareness into our own individual divine lines. So you're essentially getting online to make a request. That is step one. If you can't get into your divine line, I invite you to practice every single day. Take 10 breaths, intend, imagine, invite, allow, ask your higher self to use your energy fields to pull your awareness into your divine line. Close your eyes and imagine standing in a column, a tube, a, a channel of light, your inner energetic glass elevator shaft, whatever it is, whatever visual works for you, but essentially pulling yourself into your divine line. That is step one. If you're not in your divine line, your protocols are not going to work very effectively. Once you're in your divine line, your body diva is also holding its awareness in its divine line that runs through the spine. Your team are holding their awareness in their own divine lines then you're ready to make a request because as soon as you are in your divine line holding a bit of your awareness there you don't have to hold a hundred percent of your awareness but enough you immediately get access to your higher self so holding your awareness on the front of your spine in your divine line you now have access to your higher self you can also travel or and or you could travel up your divine line to your higher self either one work then you ask your higher self to work with the energetic fields and the guides to energetically locate perhaps whatever you want to let go of and then energetically activate the solution so a lot of the protocols are aimed at letting go of energies that limit limit us and then activating the vibrations that we truly intend we are then consciously practicing what we intend to master instead of doing the opposite so if I'm in a state of fear, and the opposite of fear is trust or empowerment or connection, I'm going to invite my higher self, my body to his higher self and team to work with the energetic fields and the guides to let go of the fear and to activate the vibration of trust at the level of my higher self and in my divine line. And then you wait. So you make the request. You imagine your higher self doing the work, but you're not using your mind to do it. You imagine your body, divine nature, spirit in a higher realm, activating a vibration of trust or empowerment, whatever it might be in its divine line. You imagine your team doing it. And this is the piece that most people don't allow for is the waiting, the holding the awareness. If you don't hold the awareness, that conscious awareness of the work happening in the higher realms, it's not as efficient. It's not as powerful. Again, you're not using your mind to do it. You're asking that energetic aspect of you to do it. And as your higher self, that energetic aspect of you does it, your body, David, does it, your team does it. We have to have all three of those energies holding a similar coherent vibration. It then begins to reflect down to you here in this realm. Instead of looking for outer outcomes of I want to have a job or I want to have a beloved partner or I want to have lots of money or I want to live in a beautiful home. I'm going to invite you to really focus on the qualities. If you had that, what would you be feeling inside? Have your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self activate that vibration every single day. Then every single time you think about that outer circumstance and what you want to manifest in the second breath, Bring your awareness back to your divine line and hold the awareness that that vibration is flowing in the divine line of you, your body, and your team. 
So that is how you do a protocol. And at the very end of a protocol, I invite you to always update your reference points. It's like hitting your fuel gauge, resetting your fuel gauge for this new vibrational way of being. If you don't update your reference points, your body does reference points, your team, you're going to keep perceiving from that old lens. So feel free to create your own protocols, but use that formula, those steps. It will be a thousand times more effective. And remember, the vibration that you do hold inside yourself is eventually reflected to you in the outer world. Um, there is another piece that I really want to speak to, and that is how to deal with attack from others. So if others attack you, and there is an interesting phenomenon that happens when somebody attacks you. There's two, several variables or several reasons for that. One, the person feels safe with you. They don't feel safe with other people. And in that safe container that you are creating and holding, they are then able to process, release, and let go of the trauma they might be holding or the stress that they might be holding from other outer circumstances, situations, and relationships. So instead of taking it personally, recognize, oh, this person feels safe with me and they're processing all of the other stuff that they don't, they can't process with anyone else but me. Not always the funnest way to be in relationship with people, but just hold that reference point. The second possibility when someone attacks you is that you are carrying responsibility for them and they want that responsibility back. Send that responsibility back to them. You do have information. Send that information from your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self, your team to their higher self, their body, Davis, higher self and team. The third reason that someone attacks is that in a previous incident in this incarnation or previous incarnation, you, your body or your team traumatize them in some way and you are carrying a fragment, a little nugget of their energy. Anytime we traumatize someone, we essentially carry a little fragment of their energy. So they might be coming after us to get that fragment back. Invite your higher self, your body, Davis, higher self and your team to return any soul fragments of you of them their body or their team or their spiritual family you can add that in along with all relevant and appropriate energetic information releasing any responsibility for their growth and their evolution update all reference points of how you perceive and are perceived in the outer world um right off the top of my head those are the primary reasons why someone attacks you so you can kind of tune in and discern why someone attacked you. If you have no idea, you can go through all of those steps.